tonight's top story, Hinnom Noor is on its way northwards, still a strong typhoon. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Dropping weather bulletin for September 3rd. So Hinnom Noor, a very powerful Category 1 typhoon and huge, but also Hurricane Danielle in the Atlantic, the first of the season, and Tropical Storm Javier sparking tropical storm watches for the Baja California Peninsula. We've seen 52 storms form so far this year. In the Atlantic, Danielle is well out to sea over the North Atlantic, day 95 of hurricane season here and we're still looking at those two other areas of interest, the western one still at 70% next to the Lesser Antilles now and the other area uh, clear of Cape Verde and unlikely to develop. In the eastern Pacific, Javier there is not too far away from the Baja California coast. It's going to sideswipe it, moving northwestwards, an 80% chance behind it for another system that's likely to develop and could become a significant hurricane. Keep watch for that one. In the western Pacific, of course, Hinnom Noor is still very much the main feature. There's really nothing else out there. To be honest, I'm not really sure anything could compete with Hinnom Noor's size right now and its stature. Uh, so I think it's for the best affecting the islands of Japan and in the southern hemisphere we now have the remnants of a tropical storm that was active uh, for a brief time in the South Indian Ocean surprising everyone for the second time this season so far uh, even though we've not really entered the season at all it's still pre-season two tropical storms now in that basin Let's check the satellite imagery across the Atlantic then. You can see Danielle off there towards the top right hand side. It might not look very impressive in, in terms of its convection, but that's mainly because of its higher latitude, much deeper convection in the tropical wave near the Lesser Antilles and certainly will be delivering some heavy rainfall to that area. In the Eastern Pacific, it's quite clear to see the large nature of uh, Javier. It is quite a large storm with its uh, influence extending all the way into Texas now, as well as large parts of Northern Mexico. Certainly will delivering a little bit of rain, probably maximums of two to three inches. Here's a close-up on Danielle right now on the geocolor imagery, uh, and you can see that its movement has been rather limited. Uh, gradual eastward movement there, but we expect that that will stop. It will stall a little bit more, and it will uh, go a little bit back westwards again. Jogging all around the place is what the models are suggesting. Uh, but Danielle looking pretty good uh, throughout the course of today, the eye appearing quite nicely and uh, good amounts of convection around it. It is susceptible to potential dry air throughout its life so we'll keep watching for that but a category 1 solidly. This is Javier also looking pretty decent despite its rather low intensity around about 45 miles per hour I think it still is. Um, Struggle storm watches for the Baja California coast and it's really close to the coast as well. Fascinating to see that they aren't warnings, uh, but that goes to show I suppose how weak the storm is and I imagine tropical storm force winds are barely emerging up there on the northeastern quadrant at all. In the western Pacific of course this is our morning view of Typhoon Hinnom Noor right now and you can see the southern Ryukyu Islands entering the eye, uh, eye wall, the outer bands of the eye wall again. Uh, it'll be a long while until the eye wall actually arrives there and Taiwan probably going to get a little bit more rainfall later on today you can see it there on the left rainfall totals we are very concerned about for those southern Japanese islands we're expecting around 20 inches possibly for some of these areas as the storm passes through and it's doing so slowly Looking at the wide shot of the Western Pacific, here's the last 24 hours of Hinnom Noor and it was looking very poor yesterday and now it's gotten back into its flow again. A much larger storm it is with its influence extending all the way into the South China Sea dominating even that sub-basin um, and showers on its northern side already delivering advanced rainfall to parts of South Korea and the southwestern part of Japan. Here's the South Indian, well the Indian Ocean as a whole and you can see the remnants of that tropical storm if you look carefully and in the North Indian Ocean not too much going on there, uh, just a little burst of convection in the Bay of Bengal and one earlier on in the Arabian Sea. The Australian region, rain dominating most of the Australian uh, 
country again. Uh, the west coast and the east coast there getting some fair share of frontal activity. Apart from that, not much else going on here. Uh, a little bit of rain and storms brewing over Java and parts of Sumatra in India. Let's check our sea surface temperatures then underneath Avier temperatures are currently around 28 degrees Celsius. They'll start to drop off more quickly now though. It's probably only got about 12 hours left before it goes below the threshold. Uh, in the Atlantic, Danielle, even though it's way up there, has still got decent temperatures to play with, around 27 degrees Celsius there. And you can see all points to its southwest when you consider how far it is out to sea is primed and conducive for any further tropical cyclones. It's a mystery that the other invest hasn't taken advantage yet. North Indian Ocean coming back with a bit of a bang with the sea surface temperatures, really getting back up to 30 degrees as it prepares for its second um, little season that it gets, usually towards the end of the year. Western Pacific, generally good sea surface temperatures, not too much upwelling from Hinnom nor so far. When it enters the South East China Sea, temperatures will still remain high, around 30 degrees. The further west it goes, the quicker it should weaken, considering that temperatures are cooler the further west it goes. Anomalies though in the East China Sea aren't a help to us, they are well above average as are temperatures underneath it right now. Same too for both of the other storms as well. The subtropics are really on fire this season, uh, but the tropical zones are a lot more uh, tame I would say. La Nina still well in effect there in the central part of the Pacific. Ocean heat content extremely high for parts of the Atlantic now, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. Where Danielle is it's only a tiny little bit so it's not really going to be a factor. Although it's still higher than what Javier is putting up with right now. No oceanic heat content there. And for Hinnomnor there's still a little bit under that storm as well. So it may catch up once again and the storm may intensify further. Well, let's check what the computer models think right now. This is the GFS, so Danielle wobbling around there as a hurricane for quite some time before starting to launch itself northeast. It's got a blocking high in its way at the moment, and it's only really on the 7th that it really starts to get going. That's four days from now, and that second tropical storm forming behind it from the current Invest 91L. And that takes its time to develop as well. It's well beyond the Greater Antilles by the time it does become a tropical storm. It looks like it has an internal fight with a few centers there. The other area of interest really doesn't become anything on that graphic. Javier moving off past the Baja California Peninsula, those tropical storm warnings might be justified. What happens behind it? That next storm becomes a significant hurricane and possibly a major hurricane as it approaches the Baja California Peninsula once again. So this is another one we're going to watch out for closely. Uh, it looks like the storm uh, is uh, generating or being born a little bit further south than we're expecting so that might be good news for the rest of Mexico but for Baja California something to watch out for in the next five days. Look how large Hinnomnor is as it piles into the East China Sea and GFS still thinks it will become a Category 4 again uh, as it uh, veers northwards and then strike the Korean Peninsula probably as a strong Category 2. Its effects will be damaging and widespread with wind and with extremely heavy rainfall and still potentially a storm surge impacting the region too. Uh, interestingly, the winds do start to decrease as it approaches Korea, so hopefully it won't be quite as bad as first thought. In the southern hemisphere as well, the GFS is showing a potential other system in the South Indian Ocean before day 5. There it is, cruising along, and right at the end of the day 5 loop, you start to see a new system forming in the Bay of Bengal, uh, actually in the Andaman Sea, uh, and could develop into another tropical cyclone for the North Indian Ocean, which would still be quite a shock. It is still a bit early uh, in the time of year to be seeing activity like that. Let's check the precipitation then for Hinnomnor. So we can see it trekking up there northwards where the storm is tracking. If you're under that, under the eastern side, you're going to get enormous amounts of rain. Obviously, most of that area is sea until you get to Korea, uh, but it's still trending up for the Korean Peninsula and still high values for places like Miyakojima could be 23 inches there, which is nearly 600 millimeters. And for the mountains of Taiwan, possibly still 12 inches more, which is 300 millimeters. And even more than that in South Korea, towards the northern part of the country near the border with North Korea, we could be looking at 400 millimeters.
In the eastern Pacific, where we also have rain threats now from these two storms, you can see Javier is fairly tame with its rain amounts. But then the next system, we follow that, and along the coast of Mexico there, we're looking at very high rain rates and rain amounts in some areas, which could lead to flash flooding and more landslides. And when you take a look towards the end of that loop there, up to seven days, affecting the Baja California Peninsula and inland over northern Mexico. In some areas, extremely high amounts of rain are forecasted, 18.6 inches there. I think that might be part of Guerrero province. Uh, so we're looking at very high amounts there again that is 450 millimeters that could be our maximum for the coast of Mexico quite severe into the longer range day 5 through 10 you can see Danielle shifting northwards there and dying out eventually in the far north Atlantic but check out that other system that briefly becomes a strong hurricane according to GFS between days 5 and 10 maybe category 3 maybe pushing towards category 4 status even as it accelerates towards the northeast across the Atlantic probably not 4 but category 3 there by the GFS uh, which can't be ruled out for that kind of scenario the eastern pacific you can see this second storm moving in as a hurricane baja california landfall maybe a category two and then moving up towards the northern part of mexico and uh, its remnants even moving into the united states let's watch that end part again if we can uh, with that storm moving through there it is quite powerful through the gulf of california its remnants quite clearly make it into southeastern arizona uh, probably still with tropical storm force winds although that is towards the end of that forecast uh, zone they 5 to 10 we can't really say that for certain western pacific during this time is going to be a little bit quieter but there are still signs of storms indeed there is one out at sea headed northwards past the agasawara islands and headed for eastern japan uh, and starts to just recurve a little bit towards the end of that loop on day 10. We also just saw a brief landfall in vietnam as well from a small spin-up storm uh, so we could still be looking at two more systems over the course of the next week and a half. Indian Ocean, what happens with that Bay of Bengal system? Well, there it is, rather, rather broad system, tries to become a hurricane equivalent storm, makes landfall, I think in Odisha, and moves inland. And that wouldn't really be good news for Pakistan because I imagine most of its remnant energy will make it through there uh, and obviously deliver more rain, as we saw from the other storm not long ago i think it was 4b that lasted forever after it moved inland over india well finally that's all the serious stuff over and done with you can take a look at the force 13 merch store scan the barcode and it will take you there to all of our products as well as our animations on request individual and full season and we've still got our prize possession still waiting for a hone t-shirt which is still very true in the long range beyond day 10 through to day 16 this is what is showing up for the atlantic and the eastern pacific a few possible spin-up systems off the u.s east coast and two in the eastern pacific as well another little landfall there for the baja california peninsula uh, so an interesting model run this one showing what happens in those two areas uh, and again off the u.s east coast a rather broad system that tries to develop and looks like it gets sucked back into North Carolina and makes a fairly weak landfall. Out in the Pacific at the super long range, what happens to that typhoon? Well, it's still going strong, maybe even stronger after it passes Japan, curves a little bit and eventually turns post-tropical and still delivers hurricane force winds to parts of Alaska as it moves over into the Bering Sea. So another storm that might be interesting in its own little way but that is on the very long range there in the western pacific nothing else of real note around the world for the extended range today so then on this day back in 1983 uh, hurricane kiko was a powerful storm and strengthening off the western coast of mexico uh, and rumours that it may have become a Category 5 later on in its life uh, by a day or so. And uh, Typhoon Ellen was maturing in the Western Pacific. Uh, it would eventually become a very powerful typhoon. I can't remember if that one became a Category 5 or not, but it was strong and it hit the northern part of the Philippines, Luzon, 
uh, a few days later. So that's our pick for the On This Day for today. You can check out more information on our Cyclone History Twitter handle. So this year, the next name on the Atlantic naming list then now is Earl in the Eastern Pacific. It's K, and in the Central Pacific, the next name is still Hone. Still, wow. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Muifa, and in the North Indian Ocean, we're still looking out for Citrang. Forecasts are right, it might be coming soon. We are still in code red, a very serious situation with Hinnom Noor, it's not going to go away anytime soon. In the southern hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Darien, the southwest Indian Ocean Ashley, and in the south pacific, it's going to be Harley. That's all for tonight's tropical weather bulletin, we'll have more tomorrow night.